Well, it's fitting today that we would be protected by a shelter belt from some severe winds out here today. <laughs> you know, when we film outside in fields, it is kind of difficult to find a spot to film some days because the wind comes up and it messes with our microphones some and our cameraman we... doesn't like trying to hold that <laughs> camera steady. We have to try to film early in the mornings when the wind isn't blowing so much. So hopefully you can see a little crop in the background, but today we've got a shelter belt in the background. We wanted to talk about the good and the bad with shelter belts. I've got an international story that I want to share. We were over in the Ukraine uh, a couple of years ago in the fall and we saw all these shelter belts around every field. It was just bordered with trees and we thought, wow, you know, that's kind of neat that they did that. When did all this come about? And just like in our country in the 30s, there were some severe winds over there and dry conditions and there was dirt blowing everywhere. So in Ukraine, they built shelter belts around the fields to stop this erosion. Well, I thought you were going to tell the story about how in Ukraine they had trees right alongside the roads. And we asked about that and they said, well, we had these trees right alongside the road so we could basically shade the road in because once the United States got satellites, they didn't want to allow the United States to be able to detect Soviet army movements. So if they had the roads shaded by trees or covered by trees, then uh, they could move all their military without the United States detecting it. Well, so there are a lot of different purposes for trees out there. Well, one thing that you'll see around a lot of farmsteads in our part of the country is you'll see wind protection or tree shelter belts on the north side and on the west side of farms. Mainly this is to fight the northwest winds in the winter that whip through farms and really make it a pretty miserable place to be uh, further north in the country. Also, it allows the sunshine to come in on the south and the east sides of the farms, which being on the northern side of North America is a pretty nice thing. Okay, so let's talk about shelter belts and trees out in field situations. And you know, you may not have thought about this at all, as a non-farmer, you probably have never, this has never crossed your mind even, but you know, when we have trees out in fields, let's say there's just a row of trees and then I have crop planted on either side. You know what we see on both sides of that tree belt? We see taller crops and very often higher yielding crops. Because here's the thing, wind is a yield limiting factor out in fields. Wind is a stress to the crop, especially sometimes when we get higher winds. Well, having those trees out there does slow the wind down. Even if you have wind coming from a direction and it's going into a tree belt, it does seem to slow down a little bit getting to that tree belt because what it's forced to do is work its way around the tree belt. So it doesn't matter necessarily which side of the trees you plant your crop on, but on either side you're going to have a little taller crop because you have a little less stress caused by the wind. Okay, well let's, let's take the reverse side of that when you do have trees along the side of a field and you have a moisture limiting situation where you don't get much rainfall, all of a sudden you've got trees competing with crop for moisture. So That's sometimes true. along trees, uh, you can see the first few rows out where there are a lot of tree roots underneath the field, actually getting sucked dry a little bit faster than the crop further out into the field. Here are the other couple of things. A lot of times we'll see more bug problems near tree belts because a lot of insects will blow up from the south with southerly winds into the Midwest during the summertime. So we have more bug problems, things like corn borers around tree belts. Another thing that we can have in tree belts very often is buckthorn and on buckthorn, soybean aphids can find a winter home. So we have more soybean aphid problems near shelter belts. One other thing that we saw just this morning looking at the soybean field that we're standing by is we saw some feeding out in the soybean field <laughs> and Brian said, wow, what's been chewing on our soybeans? Well, actually, I said deer and Darren goes, no, no. I think it's rabbits. Well, it was absolutely <laughs> rabbits. We, we were on the other side of this shelter belt uh, a year ago where we had soybeans. This year we've got, got corn, but, but we saw that there was some crop feeding right along the edges and we actually saw a rabbit one morning that we were doing some filming just like today out in the field chewing on the plant. So I'm certain that's what's going on uh, in this particular field today. So once again, shelter belts can be a good thing if they're around a farm place, they can protect that farm from the wind. If they're in crop fields, they can certainly help the crop actually yield better around those trees because it cuts down the wind and cuts down the stress. But the flip side is you can very often have more moisture loss, you can have more insects. One other thing we didn't talk about is sometimes weeds can get started alongside tree belts. Maybe our weed of the week is one of those things. Have you seen this weed in your fields? 